For the most part, yes. Um, there are some gas stations or chains of gas yeah, stations yeah. Um, that uh, that do pretty well. Okay. Um, also, if you know, it used to be years ago that every gas station in America marked their gas up about yeah. three three to five cents yeah. a gallon, and that was all they made. They would make more money selling a soft drink yeah. and a candy bar than they did yeah. on a tank of gas, and that's that's not the case. So anymore. so so. And, and you know, around the country, there's going to be differences. But by and large, you're saying that stations themselves, or maybe let's say chains of stations, because a lot of the, a lot of I've heard, I've had station owners tell me the distributor calls them on a Monday and said, "This is how much you can uh, charge for gas." So, most uh, it, it, who is would generally speaking, most gas prices are set by who? The, the owners of the station, okay. and and you know you still have mom and pop stations yeah. uh, that 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 they own one or two or maybe three yeah. stations in that local yeah. area. Uh, you have local chains, you have regional chains, you okay. have national chains, you have some stations that are owned by the big oil companies themselves. Uh, Shell yeah. Oil, for example, owns a number of Shell stations yeah. Oh, yeah. around the yeah. country, and so. You're in that situation. You've got somebody at Shell headquarters that are setting the prices uh, around the country mm -hmm. for their Shell stations. Mom and pop are, you know, setting theirs, changing them from day to day as they need to. Um, and if you've got a local chain, regional chain, national chain, you've got somebody somewhere okay. in that, uh, you know, somewhere up the ladder that's setting those prices every day. And and it could vary from town to town, yeah. state to state. And, and even inside does. the city, uh, yes. you know, depending on, on regional. There's, it, it's a supply and demand, and, and I suppose in many cases how much they think the the buyer is willing to pay for a gallon of gas. Is that part of it? Yes, that's definitely part of it. That's a big part of their equation because yeah. Yeah. Um, they're, they're in it to make money. So they yeah. want to find that, that sweet spot where they can price their gas as high as they can yeah. and still sell the most yeah. of it. Okay. If the price gets too high, then their sales drop. And if their prices get too low, yeah. their sales will go up. But yeah. then yeah, they make, yeah. yeah, so they want to find that, that sweet so, so, spot. You know, the, where yeah. the most you can charge and still get people to buy. Right, right. Okay, now there's something else. There's summer summer formula gas. Yes. And, and, you know, sometimes when you read that, well, they're changing to the more expensive. Well, why are they doing that? Well, the reason they change formula is, is, is uh, like in some big cities in California, for instance, because they're trying to get away from being so polluted. Yes. And the summer formulas pollute less, and that's why there's so many changes. Am I right about that's that? That's exactly right, yes. They have what they call a summer blend and a winter blend. And the summer blend, as, as yeah. you just said, they 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 have some extra steps in the refining yeah. process to, to make that gasoline burn cleaner, produce less pollution, so you cut out on smog and things like that that are more of a yeah. problem in the summertime than the wintertime. And so those extra steps in refining that gas cost a little more to do. So uh, we usually see uh, the summer blend gas uh, really about, it's only about five or six cents a gallon typically okay. the, in the price difference. And that kind of gets absorbed into yeah. the springtime increase. So we really don't, don't notice it very much. It's not like it's just one day the whole country goes up, you know, five cents yeah. a gallon. It's, it kind of, kind of works its way in slowly. Okay, so uh, my assumption is that gas prices are kind of inching, uh, just my glancing at the, the pump, the signs I see, they're, they're already inching up, correct? Yeah, they, uh, they've they been kind of bouncing around yeah. the last couple of months, but um, up and down, up and down. But typically we see our prices increase uh, during March, April, and May, yeah. and kind of slowly but surely make their way up. And then we typically hit our peak price point right around Memorial Day weekend, give or take a week or so. And then once we get past that, we typically see them drop down just a little bit. Okay, so if you go on a late summer or early uh, early August, July or August, you, you, you or if you go late summer, yeah, you could get a little bit better you gas could, prices? You could get a little bit better gas prices. But typically for most people, the, the gas prices don't factor into their vacation plans yeah. very much because even at, when prices are yeah. high, yeah. that's still a relatively small part of their overall vacation yeah. Oh, yeah, budget. Yeah, yeah because, because that's, you know, just like apartment rents have gone up, the, the rents for rooms at the beach or yes. rooms in the mountains 
those are hot. Yeah, they're they're high. They're really high, especially the Gulf Coast, because there's so much demand for yeah. it. Um, and we we've seen that even during the pandemic, those prices were really high when a lot of people were staying at home. Um, and so, you know, you you factor in your yeah. your uh, lodging expense, yeah. your meal expense, your entertainment yeah. expense, um, and then compare that to your gasoline expense.